everybody and welcome back to Investing with Wesley. Today's episode, I wanna to talk to you more about central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. And in today's episode, I really wanna break down what the difference is between Bitcoin and CBDCs. Now, I don't wanna break down cryptos in general because cryptos individually are extremely different. Specifically, the difference between Bitcoin and central bank digital currencies. And the reason I wanna break this difference down to you guys is because the only way you can fight against the tyranny that CBDCs actually are is with Bitcoin. No other cryptocurrency out there can match what Bitcoin can do. And already countries all across the world are rejecting CBDCs and implementing Bitcoin as a standard currency on how they operate. Okay, so the four topics we're gonna to talk about today in comparison is the permission, the anonymity, centralization, and the beneficiaries. So for starters, let's talk about permission. Bitcoin is completely permissionless. It is a free market. No one person or entity can regulate anything that you do regarding Bitcoin. Another big plus when it comes to Bitcoin is that it is completely public. It is a public blockchain or a public ledger. So anyone, including you who might not even have a Bitcoin, can log into the ledger and see every transaction that's ever been made from the very start of Bitcoin up until transactions happening right away. And best of all, this ledger is so advanced and so secure because of all the nodes and miners out in the field right now that no one can change it and no one can delete it. So when it comes to keeping track of spending or protecting yourself from fraud, Bitcoin is very secure in this manner. Now in comparison, let's talk about CBDCs. CBDCs or central bank digital currencies operate just like the dollars or regular currencies operate today. It is all controlled by one entity, it is not decentralized, and that entity has to grant you permission. So if they think you're a criminal, you're committing fraud, or doing anything that they don't like, they can revoke all permission you have to run the CBDC. Meaning not only is your access to money being controlled, but it could also be taken away for any and every reason that they deem necessary. Another observation with the CBDC is that it is the opposite of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is decentralized and everyone has access to the ledger. And like I already said, CBDCs are centralized and only the Federal Reserve government and its banks operating as nodes have access to the ledger. You and I will not have any access to the ledger or be able to see any of the transactions that are taking place. So whereas if we had a public ledger system, you'd be able to see shady deals happening between politicians and billionaire corporations. In a private ledger, only the Federal Reserve and the subsequent banks acting as nodes would be able to see that. Now, the second thing we wanna to touch on is anonymity, because this is one of the big things that the government attacks about Bitcoin, even though it is just completely false. So Bitcoin is not fully anonymous. It is synonymous. So everything that you do regarding Bitcoin is out there on the blockchain. So it is not completely anonymous. Everyone can track what it is you're doing, but it is synonymous because no one exactly is going to know which wallet address is yours. It's almost like a fictitious name. So there's been several cases where law enforcement is actually able to use Bitcoin's public blockchain to track where certain money is going and catch people committing scams and fraud. Again, it's not anonymous as they want you to believe. It's just synonymous because you have to know who owns the particular wallet to really know who's sending the money. Now, even though Bitcoin is synonymous, central bank digital currencies are not. Central bank digital currencies are going to be basically exactly how every bank account works today. If you go to the bank and open up an account or wanna open up a brokerage account with a broker, they basically have to know everything about you. They need to know your social security number, they need to know your net worth, where you work, how long you've worked there, where you live, how long you've lived there, what your past addresses are. They need to know absolutely everything about you. And the same would be true when creating your FedNow account to start receiving central bank digital currencies. The New York Fed will have all of your financial detailed information stored in their databases to make sure you are exactly who you say you are when you're creating this account. Now, we've already been operating based on that way of doing things for a long time, so that may not seem like a big deal to you, but just think about every single person here in America and every single business. 
all our financial and tax information all being stored in one database at the Federal Reserve. That would create a prime time target for cyber attacks. And if there's ever a breach, everyone's information would be out. Again, on the opposite side is Bitcoin, where everyone can see all the transactions, but no one can know based on encryptions whose wallet belongs to who. There's gonna be absolutely no way for anyone to know unless you tell them that your wallet address is this, and then they'll be able to track everything that that particular wallet address does. So even if cyber criminals wanted to hack into Bitcoin, one, based on its encryption and algorithm, it is physically impossible, but two, they wouldn't even be able to know whose information is whose, mainly because no financial information like that is held on the blockchain. Now, I've already hinted on it before, but let's talk about the centralization. Central bank digital currencies are a centralized entity giving the government or whoever is in control of the Federal Reserve totalitarianism access to do whatever they want with that money. That money is in complete control of the Federal Reserve and they can program, add, delete, limit your spending, limit how much you're allowed to save. They can do whatever they want with these CBDCs, including issue expiration dates on them, meaning you have to spend them or it's like you never even got them. Central bank digital currency is completely programmable currency and because it is centralized, that is a breeding ground for tyranny because we all know power usually corrupts. I already have my reservations when it comes to the government in general on how corrupt they actually are. Now give them full access to control exactly how everyone spends and saves their money is just too much power for someone to not seize and use for the wrong reasons. On the other side, there is Bitcoin, a fully decentralized currency. Now Bitcoin operates based on the miners and nodes that operate in a network. Now, anyone and everyone can be a node operator. And a node operator is just someone who downloads the blockchain, downloads the ledger, and verifies transactions that are happening in the blockchain. So if just two people were nodes, assuming me and you were the only nodes for Bitcoin, it would actually be extremely easy to hack into, to make changes, because I only have to change two different things on each node because I only have to change my node and your node to make it seem like whatever hack or whatever false thing I changed to the blockchain came true. But there are hundreds and thousands of nodes out there and it is physically impossible for someone to hack into every single one of them at the exact same time and make the exact same change because these nodes are always talking to each other to verify certain transactions that are happening. It is completely unhackable and completely safe. Now, how would someone make changes to Bitcoin? Could you ever issue more Bitcoin or take Bitcoins away like you could with central bank digital currencies? Well, the answer is no. There's only 21 million Bitcoins out there in existence that are currently being mined. And once that supply ends, that supply is it. All we will have to use as currency is a total of 21 million coins. But I should also add that how Bitcoin operates and the Lightning Network and other things that happen behind the scenes, any change that has to make isn't in one person or the one person that owns the most Bitcoin. It's not centralized in any way. Any change that has to happen to Bitcoin has to happen by a vote of all the holders. So several changes have already been brought to a vote to limit the size of the blocks in the blockchain, thus make processing them even faster. But everyone votes no on that because lowering the size of the block per blockchain would also lower its security. So already people are trying to make it, in a sense, more efficient and easier to process, but no one is sacrificing their security for it. So it is a complete free market, it is a democracy, and everyone has a vote. Whereas with central bank digital currencies, only one person has a say, and that is whoever controls the digital currency. And like I just stated right now, that is also who the beneficiaries are. The beneficiaries of a central bank digital currency is whoever is in control of it. Whoever's in control of the Federal Reserve's monopoly on money creation and deleting can alter central bank digital currencies and program them to fit any need or any idea that they see fit. Whereas the beneficiaries of Bitcoin and decentralized forms of currency are the people that 
hold them or operate its network. Everyone gets a vote, everyone gets a say, and majority rules. It is completely free, completely democratic in that nature. And it's because of all the reasons I've mentioned today that it's a public ledger, it is completely free use, it's democratic and everyone gets a vote. It's because of this that other countries are already turning down their central bank digital currencies and using Bitcoin. Now, when the central bank digital currencies here in the US go live, I extremely doubt they're gonna allow us to buy things that help us escape that system. So they won't allow us to buy gold with CBDCs. They won't allow us to buy Bitcoin with CBDCs. So because of that, everyone who can buy Bitcoin and gold right now should be buying Bitcoin and gold right now because that is the only way to stop a central bank digital currency takeover. The government has its ideas in creating new currencies, but the government also has to follow suit with whatever the people decide to use as currency. If everyone across the US right now all decided to switch the currencies and start using gold again, then in order for the government to collect its taxes from the people, they would have to switch and operate in gold. The vast majority of people that all agree on switching currencies control how the government responds. And that is the only way to stop this central bank digital currency takeover that is eventually going to happen. Everyone needs to switch to Bitcoin. Everyone needs to switch to gold while they still can and while they still have the freedom to use their money. Remember, whoever controls the money supply also controls the people and the world. So why give total control over the money supply over programmable money to one entity and one person when power corrupts? Instead, diversify it amongst all the people have it be a free market, a democratic use, where everyone's vote has a say in determining what we do. And just for reference, I am such a strong believer that people need to buy Bitcoin now while they still can, that I've already spent money out of my own pocket to operate a node. I am now a Bitcoin node operator, verifying transactions across the ledger and making sure everything is accurate. And this node will run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter what. So there's always just at least one more node out there on the system, verifying transactions and keeping it safe. That is all money out of my own pocket that I am spending just to make sure that this Bitcoin system keeps staying safe, secure, and of free use. I hope you got value in this video. I hope I helped you understand the very key differences between central bank digital currencies and Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is freedom in a sense in however you wanna spend your money, whereas central bank digital currencies is tyranny waiting to happen because unfortunately this would allow them to program your money, your spending habits, your saving habits, and everything you do when it comes to money. If you have any questions, comments, or just want something addressed, I have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account that you can message me privately there. Either way though, the choice is yours, and I'll see you in the next episode.